This is not financial nor professional advice. This video is for entertainment only. Greetings, everyone. My name is Stephen Fox, and today I'm going to give you my list of uh, semiconductor stocks that I'm investing in and some that I'm considering. Uh, there are so many semiconductor stocks and I and I've looked through the list and I think I've I picked the best ones uh, and I will let you decide. I'll give you what I think of them and then some uh, ratings from VectorVest which is kind of my objective outer source to kind of cross check how I'm looking at these things. The list of the three semiconductor stocks that I picked is at the end of this video. Please like and subscribe if this information is useful uh, for you so that you get notified of future videos because I eventually will make videos on every one of the stocks. Now, I'm not going to make a specific video for every one of the semiconductor stocks simply because there's so many of them. And, and I think it's a very complex uh, field, uh, but I, I can give you more the feel and what uh, outside sources and analysts think uh, to give you some guidance on how to make a decision regarding which semiconductor sto stock to buy. When we talk about semiconductor stocks, we first have to talk about my uh, very highly rated stock, NVIDIA. It's very high on my list. and. I, I love that stock because it's going to be so dominant, I think, because of electric cars. Uh, they have uh, computer graphics uh, units, uh, graphics processing units, they call them GPUs, uh, that are used so much in artificial intelligence and in displays on, on your electric car. Uh, I have a Tesla, so I experience this, and uh, I can see that we will, a large majority of us will be, in 10 years, it will be the usual thing to have an electric car and not the exception like it is now. Uh, and they are, they are so much better. Uh, I, ask anyone that owns an electric car if they would ever go back. Uh, the only thing about an electric car is you have to have the charger in your home. It's it's just too inconvenient <laughs> to go and, and charge it elsewhere. They they don't have enough charging stations, really. I mean, it can be done, uh, but I don't want to be jar driving to a charging station all the time uh, because it takes a long time you know, to charge them. Well in comparison to filling up with gas. It, it would take a half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, at home, uh, if you have a charger installed uh, in your garage, which will cost you about a thousand bucks, it takes about four hours uh, if your car is low to bring it up to full charge to go about 400 miles in, in my Moto S. Uh, so, and you you can do it just off a of regular current and not have it installed. Of course, then it, it does it much slower. Uh, the charger I have in my garage, it'll do about 40 miles an hour. And it, if you just do it from a wall regular wall socket, it'll do four or five miles an hour, which is fine if you charge it each night, you know, that'll probably be enough, more than enough probably to get you back and forth to work if, if you live within a reasonable distance. Uh, but I think the video, uh, it is the gorilla. And I, I think it's, it's an 800 pound gorilla and it's going to keep growing. Uh, we're using uh, these semiconductor chips in virtually everything. Semiconductor chip sales went up 11% last year and 17% this year, and they're not going to slow down anytime soon. You know, you hear about a chip shortage, and I think there's a reason for that. Uh, there's been this shortage for a while, and why hasn't it ramped up? And I think it's because of the chip maker's previous experience. It tends to be cyclical, 
where there's a big demand for chips and then everybody gets making them and then the demand falls off and they're left holding the bag. Uh, and also as they increase the supply, the, the price of the chips goes down. So they're sort of negatively re rewarded for ramping up. And so I, I think part of it is uh, they've just been holding back and, and not going into it too fast. Uh, just they don't want to be left holding the bag by overproducing too many chips. And there are so many chip producers. I mean, I've selected some companies, the ones that I'm most comfortable with, uh, but there's 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 like 20 good companies at least. Uh, these I like these companies because uh, one of them is undervalued and the other is, is really uh, 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 an explosive growth story, uh, sort of like Tesla in a way. The International Data Corporation uh, projects that uh, chip sales in the following markets uh, will grow significantly. Uh, they think uh, chip sales for mobile phones will grow by 28%. Game consoles is a big deal. Uh, that's going to grow 34%. Uh, car applications, auto applications, 23%. Uh, wearables like watches and, and things like that, uh, 21%. Uh, smart home devices. We're getting very smart about how we manage our homes. Uh, that's going to grow by 20%. And of course, uh, computer laptops are going to grow about 12%. And that's a very established market by now. There's good news and there's bad news regarding the computer chip shortage. The good news is that the computer chip shortage is going to end. The bad news is that the computer chip shortage is going to end. Uh, it's, it's good news uh, for makers of cars, of course. Uh, Elon Musk today on Friday uh, said that they're not going to run into a chip shortage. And I think he's anticipating that every, all the chips are being ramped up and they're going to have the chips they need uh, to, to supply the cars. So that's very good news for Tesla. Tesla went up a bunch today. It went up like from 750 uh, to 770 something. Uh, so it's it was very good news. Um, the bad news is potentially for chip makers again, and they, they're, they're hesitant uh, to get involved too deeply or get producing too much because they worry that it's going to turn on them, that the economy will turn down. People will stop buying as many mobile phones, uh, computers and cars, and that they get caught with an oversupply. But uh, they don't really see that happening. I mean, the, the, the economy hasn't really reopened yet. I mean, we sort of had the start of a reopening. And I, I think this economy is just chomping at the bit to reopen. And I think that's why the stock market it seems like it can't go down. There, there was every reason for it last week to go down, and it would not. And so it has made me a... a a perma bowl. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to forecast that the market's going down. There's just too much money on the sidelines, and the, there's nothing else to do with it, uh, unless unless you just want to hold cash, and that's that seems kind of risky in itself. Uh, so I, I choose to be conservative, and I've tightened up my criteria for what stocks I put on that list. And so when I put a stock on that list, it's not just because I like it, but I have analysts uh, uh, and, and particularly vector vests, which I find particularly valuable. And, and I just love their educational materials and the way they explain everything and the way they look at the overall trend of the market as their guiding star while holding to the numbers pretty closely but not being slaves to the numbers either. And so I really like that about them. 
I need to mention that I am not sponsored by VectorVest at all, that I just like them and there's no sponsorship or I'm not being paid to say this. Uh, this is my own opinion. Beyond NVIDIA, I also like monolithic power systems. Uh, I view monolithic power systems, and I'll just call them monolithic from this point on. Uh, I think uh, they are sort of the little brother to NVIDIA, and they are involved in everything. Uh, they're involved with cars, with industrial, with tele telecom, with storage, network, cloud computing, and high-end consumer applications. They're also involved in things like medical. Uh, you can go to their site and you will see that they made a little electric car and not that they're going to be selling electric cars, but it really was like a demonstration uh, vehicle. Uh, they're showing how their sensors and the electronic uh, gadgets that they developed can be used on electric cars. Uh, they sell this to original equipment manufacturers like electric car manufacturers. Monolithic power was just added to the S&P 500 in February of 2021, so they've really come into their own. Looking at the one-year chart on monolithic power, you can see that it's roughly doubled in the last year. Uh, I bought it at about 511. I think a year ago it was selling for around the uh, the the 240s. Uh, so it's it's quite a dramatic growth story, and one that's probably going to continue strongly into uh, 2022. But I, I do have the feeling that I don't know if I'm going to be a long-term holder of this one. Uh, I see it as dramatic growth. I'm going to follow it. I might be tempted uh, to bow out sometime in 2022, but it just depends on how strong the economy stays. If we go into full recovery, uh, I think uh, the chip uh, shortage continues because I think chips are literally being installed in everything, including even your LED light bulbs. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just getting wild. Uh, the Internet of Things, I think everything is going to be connected to everything else. Uh, and it's sort of unbelievable the world we're entering. So NVIDIA, it popped on Wednesday. And that's because of the po positive analyst recommendations. But then on Friday, it dropped. Uh, and it dropped because China is more or less going to ban uh, Bitcoin uh, from being used as currency in its country. Uh, they are getting more and more strict as far as not allowing that. Already, the, you know, the mining is moving out of uh, China, and now they're not going to allow crypto to be used as currency. Uh, this affects NVIDIA because uh, NVIDIA sells uh, the mining modules. Uh, they're the same things that are used in the gaming, uh, but they're also used for mining Bitcoin. Uh, but that only represents 2% of NVIDIA's business, so it's not going to affect them that much. Uh, but it was a drag uh, on, the, on the stock Friday, and so it went down, and I bought it on the down side. I finally, I, I had a feeling, you know, that I, I wanted to wait for a downturn, and Friday I got it, and so I bought it near the bottom of, of that downturn, and then it recovered a little bit, so... I, I'm okay with it, and I, I'm just going to see where it goes from here on. I want to hold on to it because I think it's a long-term uh, growth st story that really can't be stopped. Monolithic power was just added to the S&P 500 in February of 2021, so they've really come into their own. Looking at the one-year chart on monolithic power, you can see that it's roughly doubled in the last year. Uh, I bought it at about 511. 
I think a year ago it was selling for around the uh, the the two forties. Uh, so it's it's quite a dramatic growth story, and one that's probably going to continue strongly into uh, twenty twenty two. But I I do have the feeling that I don't know if I'm going to be a long term a holder of this one. Uh, I see it as dramatic growth. I'm going to follow it. I might be tempted uh, to bow out sometime in 2022, but it just depends on how strong the economy stays. If we go into full recovery, uh, I think uh, the chip uh, shortage continues because I think chips are literally being installed in everything, including even your LED light bulbs. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just getting wild. Uh, the Internet of Things, I think everything is going to be connected to everything else. Uh, and it's sort of unbelievable the world we're entering. Looking at the year to date uh, chart, uh, we can see that this uh, 20, almost $24 billion market cap uh, company uh, has had dramatic growth again this year. Uh, the price to earnings ratio is 123, but that's the trailing. The forward price to earnings is a more reasonable 63, which is still high, uh, but you're, you're paying for the anticipated growth uh, because of the chip shortage. That's probably going to extend at least into 2022. And looking at the vector vest ratings on monolithic power, they give it the green light on upside potential, safety, and timing uh, for an overall very good and excellent even uh, rating. Uh, my experience with Vector Vest is they usually uh, uh, will recommend something as a buy when it gets to be above 1.25, and this is well above that. Uh, so. Uh, if Vector Vest is right, uh, we're in very good hands. My last uh, chip stock isn't really a chip stock, uh, but it's Applied Materials. And Applied Materials doesn't directly make chips themselves. They make the machines that make the chips. Okay, so it still ends up being a chip play. But this is sort of a blast from the past. Uh, applied materials, as we can see from the chart, is uh, over $120 billion. Uh, so it's a very established company. I bought this stock in the 1980s and it helped me buy one of my first cars. And so I'm very attached to it. Uh, but I'm, I'm very pleased that it's receiving very high ratings uh, from VectorVest. Uh, and we can take a look at that chart and we can see that it's rated very highly. VectorVest rates it as having good upside potential, safety, and they think the timing is very right. Uh, so this could be a very good stock to own. I also bought some applied materials on Friday, so we will see where that goes. And here you see uh, the ratings for the three semiconductor stocks uh, listed. Uh, and uh, they are very close in ratings. Anything over 1.3 is a very solid rating from Factor Vest, as I'm very familiar with their rating system. So these are all potentially very good stocks. I'm, I'm going to hang with them and see how it goes. I, I think it's pretty clear for the next year that we're going to get some growth out of them. Uh, but let's see what happens. Uh, thank you for listening and. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.